wow, this is uh, this is certainly one way to start out the week. So Microsoft just announced that Mixer, their streaming platform, is dead. Dunzo, Thanos snapped out of existence, and I don't know if double snapping meant that we brought it back to life. But was Mixer ever really alive? Who knows? This comes on the heels of very concerning reports about the platform's viability, in addition to sexual allegations from its streamers, and now blatant racism from top-level management. Yeah, it's it's only Monday, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot for us to unpack today, so I'm going to try my very best to keep it all together. We might as well start at the top with what is Mixer, or as it's appropriate to say now, what was Mixer? Mixer was a streaming platform. A streaming platform that existed in the ever, <laughs> I was going to say ever-growing sphere, but it's ever-shrinking sphere of streaming platforms. It was a platform where you could stream games on and that's about all I could say about it (laughs) if I'm being perfectly honest with y'all. Now in the early years of Mixer there was a lot of promise towards it. Uh, Not only was it a brand new streaming platform which is always good to see you know competition can breed all types of creativity not always but it's always good to have new players in the mix and it was backed by not only one of the biggest tech companies but a tech company who had a major imprint in the video game console sphere. So there was a lot of cool things about Mixer. Microsoft went so far as to secure top-level talent, such as Ninja, in addition to a couple of other behind-the-scenes things that were gearing up towards the Xbox Series X. Yet here we are, just a few months out from that console launching, and Microsoft has canceled Mixer. Well, not necessarily canceled it. Like You can still use Mixer, but they're incorporating all of that technology into Facebook gaming, which is another thing that we're going to touch on later. But Mixer as a platform shutting down, honestly, I am not too surprised because if if I'm being real with y'all, when it came down to streaming platforms, there's only two that people talk about. It's Twitch and YouTube. Those are just the only two. YouTube for people who have already an established audience and that audience likes to stay there and Twitch for basically everybody else, you know, and sometimes there could be some uh, inter inter lapping. Is that even a term between the two platforms where, you know, people have an audience on Twitch, but then they also put like all their highlights on YouTube or people have a big audience on YouTube and then they stream exclusively on Twitch for games, things like that. But those platforms were able to exist simultaneously. And given all the strides that YouTube has gone to make YouTube gaming a thing, it still couldn't compete against the absolute behemoth that was Twitch. And there's many reasons for that. I mean, a lot of people love Twitch for its ultra low latency, which makes it great for um, community interaction. A lot of people like the bit system. A lot of people like the emotes and a lot of things that exist there on Twitch People just have a preference for it. And likewise, some people enjoy how their life is already integrated with YouTube and how they're already watching a video. And then it's like, hey, my favorite subscriber is streaming. So why not check that one out too? With Microsoft, you would think that, okay, this is a big content manufacturer. So of course, they're going to make sure that everybody, at least in the Xbox ecosystem, is going to stream on Mixer. Looking at the numbers, oof, it, it was not very good at all. They couldn't get a 5% year over year growth, which is pretty bad, extremely bad. So them canceling the service, or at least folding it into Facebook gaming, is not too surprising. I mean, when it comes to all of these tech companies, whether we like them or not, all this corporate cheerleading, they have a lot of endeavors and initiatives that frankly don't pan out. If you look at Sony, they had a lot of initiatives in the PlayStation 3 era and the early years of PS4 that they've had to shut down because they weren't getting the numbers that they needed. It is just business at the end of the day, so I can't really fault Microsoft for cutting their losses and moving on and partnering with people who do it better. Because as y'all have seen, when it comes to music, Spotify is one of the best in the game right now. So instead of Microsoft continuing their music streaming platform, why not just work with Spotify to incorporate that into Xbox? You already use Um, your Spotify in your day-to-day life. So having it on your Xbox is just a nice little extension and it makes things easier as opposed to having a primary platform. However, there's the Facebook integration. (laughs) On the one hand, I'm just like, why? Because if you look at Facebook gaming, people use it, but not really. I guess they're trying to go on the fact that, well, you already have a Facebook account, so why not use gaming on that too? But it's just not there yet to really justify 
people jumping over there completely. I mean, with Facebook and all its current problems that people have with it right now, some folks choose to not even have Facebook accounts. They'd rather stick with Twitch or YouTube. So that's kind of weird. But at the same time, I think it makes a lot of sense because if you look at all the competitors in the market right now, Microsoft is competing with them in a grand scheme of things, if that makes sense. So they're not competing in the sense that, well, they're streaming platforms, but companies like Amazon and Google, they are going to become major players in the cloud gaming initiative. As you know, Google has Google Stadia and they own YouTube. Amazon also owns Twitch. So for Microsoft to incorporate their technology into those services who would have competing technology, maybe that could be the reason why they wanted to go with Facebook because it's just like, yeah, Facebook experiments, you know, they have their whole, their whole VR initiative, but they're not really a big player with us right now. So I, I guess that's really the only option that they had. Hopefully it pays off in their favor, but as a whole, as we've seen, most people would rather gravitate towards streaming on Twitch and on YouTube. So I think if they want to be smart, they'll bring YouTube streaming to Xbox and they'll just continue that initiative because that's not really that big of a deal. If you're not the best in a particular um, section of entertainment, don't spend more good money after bad. Maybe just move on into other initiatives and endeavors and just let the people who are good with it thrive. But that's not to say that YouTube and Twitch couldn't improve their platforms. Of course, everybody can improve. No one company is perfect. Uh, but then we move into a deeper problem that has existed for Microsoft as a whole. Microsoft, for the past generation, has been spending a lot of good money, and it's produced little to no... Like We haven't seen the fruits of their labor. Um, a lot of the partnerships that they've had with uh, developers at the beginning of the generation to produce Xbox-exclusive games really have not paid off. I mean, games like Rise and Quantum Break, Record, just to name a few, you know, they're... Okay, games, they're fine, but they didn't really light the world on fire, and I don't think they produced the numbers that Microsoft were expecting. So instead of continuing with those studios and those relationships, or at the very least, farming that out to other studios who want to take a crack at it, Microsoft just kills the product. And they've been doing that a lot this generation, so it's been kind of concerning. I know Phil Spencer has done a lot of good for the company, but when he comes on here and says... Scale bounds cancellation is good for Xbox gamers, and yet all these other games are getting canceled, or they're not getting sequels to produce. Um, you know, like that that initial vision. Maybe they can realize it in a second game. It just doesn't really bode well for the future of Xbox. As excited as I am for the Series X and all these other studios they've acquired, part of me is thinking that Microsoft is just throwing more good money at them, thinking that good money is going to produce these things instead of having the actual talent and the leadership to lead them to give us these great games. That's just one of my biggest concerns, and I've uh, talked about that before. So it'll just remain to be seen what happens. I, I do have some faith in them because they've already acquired good studios. They're, they're proven. But then you see something like Bleeding Edge come out. And while it is just a pet project from Ninja Theory, you know, it's nothing too crazy. That game came out and it's, uh, oh, yeah, here's hoping Grounded. Good luck, Grounded. Anyways, now we move into the deeper problem that exists. And this is something that, um, oh boy, this is, this is very spicy. Now, I know a lot of people are assuming that this is the reason why Mixer shut down, but the deal that was forged between Mixer, Microsoft, and Facebook would have taken like weeks to sometimes months to go ahead and do. Um, all the sexual allegations from streamers happening on the platform in addition to how all of the streamers got little to no notice, apparently no notice for some, that the platform was shutting down. They learned when we found out. That's not good at all, especially if you were trying to um, build relations and connections with the community, who are the people who are uh, keeping you alive to an extent like there were a lot of people out there who came on to mixer with the promise of hey I'm going to build a community here and I think this will work great for me and for you to come out there and not give them any notice in advance and then say okay well you have an option to come over to Facebook gaming that's essentially saying yeah you're shit out of luck and then if you want to be on this new platform you got to start over from ground zero Oh, I, I don't like that. I, I, I really, really don't because these people, they abandoned all of YouTube and Twitch in favor of this. They could have had a success on those, but they chose this. And then now you're just like, well, 
not so good. And as far as the um, sexual assault allegations are concerned, damn, it's really hot in here today. Excuse me. Just gonna wipe that off my face. Um, as far as the sexual assault allegations are concerned, this is something that's pervasive on all types of social media, so I can't fault Mixer for it, because Twitch is really bad about this in addition to YouTube. But then you have the situation with one of their employees experienced blatant racism from top-level management. Uh, as we've seen so far, Phil Spencer has already addressed this, and he's actually working towards some type of a resolution. Uh, in, the, in the coming days, we'll hopefully see something from that, because that's not cool at all what this guy has gone through and it shouldn't be you shouldn't employ those type of people who are able to openly say things like that if you guys want to get the full transcribe you can um check on twitter because it's all over twitter if you just search uh mixer plus racism and when you see that you know just with everything happening right now we need less of those people in the company you know what i'm saying we need more people who can actually do good and people who want to work to make the platform better it's still unfortunately something we see in a lot of companies these days but yeah, that's the whole situation as far as Mixer is concerned, y'all. I mean, again, it's it's not too surprising at all because if, if I'm being real, I didn't even know like 10 people who used Mixer on a consistent basis. Like I knew them, but by comparison, Twitch and YouTube, they were just much bigger by comparison. So let me know down below in the comment section, what did y'all think about this whole situation? For me to you for now, my name is NGS signing out. And like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.